Hey guys, my name is Tom and welcome back to another devlog. In this one I'm going to fix up clan prediction and I'll implement ranged combat. It's 2 o'clock and I just got client reconciliation working. Over the weekend I took some time and wrote out what needed to happen for this to work, on an actual real life piece of paper. I know, I can hardly believe it myself. Then yesterday I made a few changes to the tick system so that this would actually work. Of course this broke my interpolation code so I had to fix that as well. And finally, I tackled reconciliation the right way. In my last attempt, I had hoped to avoid building a rollback system on the client by simply storing the player's past positions and adjusting them when a state update from the server didn't match. If you watched my last video, you'll know that this didn't work at all like I had hoped, so I checked that code out the window. Then I realized that a rollback system on the client wouldn't actually be that involved, since the local player is the only object with a rigid body. That means it's the only object whose movement is affected by physics time steps. And that brings us to the present. As you can see, when I move the player around, the servers and clients representations of the player always end up in the same spot. The movement is smooth and much more responsive than before, although I've still noticed occasional jittering. I'm not sure where that's coming from, but it's something I'll have to investigate. Now, this is all on dry, non-moving land. Unfortunately, ships move, and at the moment clients don't predict their movement. Since the client sees ships in the past compared to the server, it can't accurately predict where the player's movement should take him because the starting position is wrong. This causes some considerable jittering, especially when the correct server position puts the player partially inside the ship collider. The obvious solution here is to predict ship movement as well, so I guess my client side rollback system is about to get a whole lot more complicated. However, I'm going to tackle that tomorrow because I need to start working on this weekend's video. Alright, so it's now Monday and several days have gone by without much progress. That's largely because I've had a nagging suspicion that ship prediction is overkill and not actually necessary. Since it's such a big task, I don't want to spend time implementing it if I'm not reasonably sure that it's the right thing to do, so I've been stuck in a state of indecisiveness. I didn't want to move on because the jittering when aboard a ship is unacceptable and needs to be dealt with, but I'm not entirely sure how to go about it. The time which I did spend being productive was used to work on Saturday's video. Quite a few people commented on my launcher devlog asking for a tutorial, so I finally decided to make one. Anyways, it's already after 4pm and today I was trying to figure out how other games deal with situations where moving objects like my boats can affect player prediction. I spent a lot of time analyzing video clips of various games in high lag situations since that's when it becomes easiest to guess what kind of systems are being used on what objects. As far as I can tell, it seems like moving objects often aren't predicted and I suspect that their positions are being extrapolated instead of interpolated. Extrapolating ship positions might do the trick, although it'll basically be like predicting the movement except that it's less accurate, which isn't ideal. On the other hand, extrapolating doesn't require simulating physics, which means I wouldn't need to rewind the simulation and re-simulate the way I would have to if I want to predict ship movement precisely. I still don't know what to do about it, so I think I'm going to work on ranged combat and come back to ship prediction later. Unfortunately, that means I'll have to deal with very jittery movement while sailing, but I want to do something more interesting in this devlog, and in the meantime maybe my subconscious mind will come up with some ingenious solution. It's early on Tuesday evening and I've just finished modeling a flintlock to use as the base ranged weapon for the game. I finally upgraded to Blender 2.8 and it's been a while since I modeled anything so I ended up watching a few refresher videos before I got started but I got back into it pretty quickly. Last night I also implemented a weapon switching mechanic so players now have access to two weapons represented by a cube and a sphere. One will be replaced by a melee weapon like a sword and I'm going to replace the other with the new flintlock shortly. Speaking of melee weapons, I'd actually like to get your ideas and opinions on close range combat. Guns during the Age of Sail weren't super accurate and reloading them was quite a process and I plan to mimic this in game to ensure that melee weapons play a relevant and central role in most combat situations. With that in mind, I want to make sure that I get melee combat right. I want it to feel fast and fluid while also having enough depth to keep things fresh and interesting. And that's the problem, I can't seem to think up a system that fits those needs. A hack and slash system where you left click to attack and right click to block fits the fast and fluid criteria and it would be fairly straightforward to implement, but it lacks depth. 
It easily becomes repetitive, which isn't good considering how central it would be to combat as a whole. The other idea I've been playing around with is hack and slash, but with the extra twist that the direction in which you move your mouse when clicking affects the direction of the attack or the block. This adds some good depth and keeps the repetitiveness at bay, but it's not as fast paced. With network latency in the mix, attacks need to be quite slow to give opponents an opportunity to block, and that somewhat ruins the fluidity. Plus, the directional aspect makes it quite a bit more complicated to implement. Another problem is that I haven't played an excessively large variety of games, so I'm quite unaware of what other combat systems are out there. The two I just described are really the only ones I'm familiar with when it comes to fast-paced first-person games. I'm not looking to directly copy any combat systems, but I feel like I'm lacking information which I could build off of. Anyways, if you've got any ideas regarding the future of melee combat in this project, please leave me a comment down below. At this point, any suggestions are helpful, no matter how complex, weird, or feasible you might think they are. Since melee weapons will be such an integral part of the game, I'm willing to spend some extra time on them if it means putting something together that's fun and fluid, but I could really use some extra inspiration and concepts to think about. Last night I was planning to start working on allowing players to actually shoot each other, but while recording a clip for this video I noticed my remote and local player models were the same color which they shouldn't be. Long story short, this led me down the batching, GPU instancing, and SRP batcher rabbit hole. After once again researching how they all work and when to use which method, I noticed that my water shader was marked as incompatible with the SRP batcher, so I set about resolving that. It didn't take long, but unfortunately there's no noticeable performance improvement at this point, which was somewhat disappointing. Anyways, all of that means I haven't made the pistol functional yet, so that's my plan for today. So it's almost 9 o'clock, and I just finished making it possible to shoot the pistol. I didn't get too much done yesterday, and I've been refactoring a lot of code along the way, which is why it took this long. When standing still, the bullets come out of the front of the flintlock quite nicely, but if you're moving or looking around, that no longer happens. This is simply because by the time the server informs the client that the bullet was spawned, the player has already moved further, which causes this discrepancy. The fact that I have client prediction in place makes this even worse since the player sees himself in the present, but the bullet in the past, and when you're the one that shot the bullet, it looks particularly strange. Masking it with some smoke particles will probably make it a lot less obvious, but I should also be able to reduce the gap caused by looking around if I send the player's view direction along with the shoot input. The next step is to give players health so that something actually happens when they shoot each other, so that's what I'm going to work on for the rest of the evening. Last night I got quite a bit more stuff done. Players now have health, they can die, and respawn. Your own health is displayed by this artistic masterpiece of a health bar in the bottom left corner, and when you get shot it updates accordingly. When you die, you get sent to the death cube, and then a few seconds later you pop right back out of the ground. My favorite part is the amount of knockback that's applied when a player gets shot. The only reason you go flying like this is because bullets currently have the same mass as players, so way more momentum is being transferred in the collision than you'd normally expect. I'll change this at some point, but for now I think I'll leave it because it's quite amusing. This morning I also fixed up the way the shoot input is handled, so there's less of a discrepancy between where you're currently aiming and where you actually see the bullet, but it's definitely still noticeable when you're moving around. Anyways, I should get to work on editing, so I'll leave it here for this devlog. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to obliterate the like button, and don't forget to leave me a comment with your thoughts and ideas about melee combat. Also, if you want to join me on this development journey, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any future videos. With that said, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you again next time.